Hello, Facebook. Today I learned from going on Twitter is Grandparents Day. And this year, my two remaining living grandparents both passed away. So I am now without any living grandparents. But I have lessons learned from all of my grandparents. So I wanted to kind of go through and talk about my grandparents and what I remember of them and what I learned from them and just kind of let go and reflect and think and share my raw thoughts and feelings. My, my grandpa, my dad's dad, he passed away when I was only three years old. So that would have been, I'm thinking in 1984, depending on how the year fell. And he, what I know of him, he served in the military. He received a Purple Heart. So I know he was courageous. And I know that he died of a second heart attack. Uh, heart disease runs in my family. And so he had a first heart attack and then the second one, from what I was told, he was walking up the stairs inside of his home and he fell back and before he could hit the ground, he passed away. And my dad was young at the time that my grandpa passed away. And I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly that he was the same age I was when my dad passed away. And so I know that pain. And I also saw that pain live on in my dad before he passed away. And I saw that vividly in a conversation that I had with him on his front porch. The next grandparent that um, passed away in terms of my lifetime was my mom's mom, my grandma Mary. And she was an incredible woman. She was my mentor, my best friend. She was a woman who didn't have much in terms of money. She raised, well, she had seven kids. My uncle Tommy died on his christening day as a baby from what they attribute to sudden infant death syndrome. But she worked hard to raise her family, and that woman sat with me for countless kitchen table talks, and she listened, and when I talk about listening, she genuinely listened, and she never treated me like I was less than her or younger than her or anything but somebody with respect even as a child, and she taught me how to love and guide with a non-judgmental type of love, which is something now I'm doing with my own children, so her legacy is living on, and I remember being able to share anything with her, things that would probably kill grandparents, I could share with my grandma, Mary. And I remember sharing a time in my life when I was a teenager and I made a very poor choice and she didn't have to hit me, she didn't have to yell at me. All she said was that she was disappointed in my choice that I had made. And I remember just thinking, just hit me because that would be less painful right now. Then knowing that I disappointed a woman that I respected and admired so much. My grandma Mary, she ended up passing away in 1999, uh, just a couple weeks before I graduated from high school. And I remember being terrified of death at that time. And I also had a dream before she passed away. And I didn't know it was her in that dream, but everything that played out in that dream was with her. And that scared me too, back at that point in my life. And I also saw things with my grandma in her marriage and her strength. And I saw family dynamics, even as a child, I saw division and family tension. And I remember not seeing some of my cousins for years, really Facebook brought us back together, but 
just strained relationships and I never once heard my grandma speak poorly about my cousins. I remember her having Christmas presents waiting for them if they were to come. And I admired that about her. When I had tensions with my dad, I had a really volatile relationship with my dad for a good part of my life. And I saw healing and forgiveness in that relationship. So much courage on my dad's part, cycles of abuse that were broken. And she was always the one I could go to. And she would always tell me to stay strong. And I carry that with me till today. I've gone through so much in the last 12 years. The last I shared earlier today that the last 12 years of my life has been very, very hard, very, very, very challenging. And I'm turning 37 at the end of this month. And I'm seeing in my roots that have grown out some silvery highlights that I didn't have in the past. And I am learning more and more what my grandma Mary taught me about being strong. And that woman, even though she passed away when I was 17 years old, her legacy is living on in me. Her teachings, what she taught me, her strength is being transferred to my children. It is something, that relationship is something that I carry with me. And I am so, so incredibly grateful for just to see a woman. I mean, I've had two children that I'm home with. I deal with daily chronic pain. And to know that she raised six, to know that she carried on and was able to stay strong even after the death of her baby, and to not allow that pain to prevent her from making such a positive contribution to the lives of her grandchildren. She is such a remarkable woman. And she's somebody that every day I give thanks for. The next grandparent in my life going along the timeline that passed away was my dad's mom. And I go back to that, I go back to conversations that I had with my dad. And I remember him saying to me, because I've always spoke truth from the time I was a child and it got me hit more. But it, again, it came, it came to a place of healing. It allowed me conversations that were hard to have, it, but they were so necessary and that showed so much courage and so much strength. And I remember one of the conversations my dad had with me and he was like, Nicole, I don't know how you say what you say to your grandma and get away with it. This was his mom. And from what he told me, she was a tough woman. And there were family issues on my dad's side too and tension on my dad's side of the family. We didn't talk to my grandma for a period of time. And from what I know, it was over the name that was chosen for my cousin. And when you're growing up, you don't understand those family dynamics and you don't understand why people make the choices that they make. As a mom, I've had to make choices that are hard for my family and for the well-being of my family unit and my children. And they're incredibly challenging choices to make. And with my dad, when he was like, Nicole, I don't know how you get away with saying what you say to your grandma, because he told me about how he would get beat growing up, and then his dad would come home, and he'd get beat again for whatever it was that he did as a child. And my response to my dad was that she keeps telling me that I never come over, even when I'm there, and how much she misses me. And if she doesn't like what I have to say and what I have to share and what's on my heart and the truth that I bring, then she can tell me to go home. But she never ever did and one of one of the biggest memories that I have of my grandma Jano it's my dad's mom is just how many times she would tell me she loved me and she wasn't perfect I from what I learned after her death her marriage wasn't perfect um, their family wasn't perfect I mean I even heard of alleged sexual abuse within that part of my family and I've been outspoken about sexual abuse in my own life. So I know, I know what that brings. Um, but yeah, she passed away at the beginning of this year and I was here 1600 miles away and I didn't get to be there even at her funeral because finances didn't allow for that. But thankfully my mom 
was able to use technology and allow me to be there via technology. So, but still her, her spirit lives on. And I also think about, she was a widow. And I also think about how many times she shared, I've mentored, even though I'm not a widow, I've walked alongside several widows. And I remember how my grandma used to always say to my mom, who became widowed in 2008, that she wishes she wouldn't have chose to be alone, lonely, because I believe in Christ. My grandma believed in God and you're never truly alone. And no matter if everybody abandons you and walks out on you or doesn't love you the way you would hope that they would love you, you're never truly alone. You have that relationship, but that companionship, my grandma Janowitz frequently shared that she wished that others would not choose the path that she chose. And then the last grandparent that I had, my grandpa Frank, who was my grandma Donegan, my mom's mom, her husband, he passed away this year and prayed so hard for that man. And he ended up having his final wishes of passing away at home honored and that was such a tremendous blessing and I look back at my grandpa's life and the lessons he told me growing up I was really close with my grandma his wife like I said I had so many kitchen table talks with her and my grandpa he was with the boys like my dad and my brothers would go fishing and he'd sit on the couch and he'd drink his Altus beer and I didn't really have much of a relationship with my grandpa, but I learned from him still. I witnessed him in dealing with alcoholism. He would drink a lot of Altus beer. We would take his kids, we would take him a beer, take a sip and hand it to him. And I watched him deal with gout, which was a consequence of drinking alcohol heavily. I watched him stumble in the door one day and he came home from work as a child. And always my grandma told me to stay strong and I look back and I just think about how strong she was as a woman. And I remember after my aunt had got married and he became heavily intoxicated and he ended up seeing himself on video after that night and he was so embarrassed by his actions while intoxicated that he never touched a drink again. And so I learned from him, I stopped drinking. My last alcoholic drink was drank the night that I got pregnant with my son. And so I got to see my grandpa go from living a life with alcohol to a life of sobriety. And that was a powerful lesson to see. I remember my dad saying to him, my dad had passed away at 53 years old in 2008. I was a, it's in my first week of third year medical school at the time. And I remember my dad saying to my grandpa, if you want to live, then you need to stop drinking because you're going to drink yourself to death. And we always thought that my grandpa would pass away before my grandma because of his lifestyle choices. And my grandma passed away before he did. My dad passed away before he did. I just, the age of 53 and my grandpa was in his 80s when he passed away this year and I saw him fight I saw his faith in his final days and I learned of his final wishes and seeing his kids come back together like I said from the time I was a child I saw division and tension within that family and some of his final wishes or that his children would come back together and love one another. And I understand establishing healthy boundaries and taking care of yourself and not allowing people to treat you poorly. But I also believe in the power and the restoration of God. And that's something that I continue to pray for in my own life and my own relationships and healing and restoration and love and courage, the type of courage that it took my dad 
to come to me and apologize to me before he passed away. It was on Father's Day of 2008, just weeks before he passed away. And I will forever, forever be grateful for the courage and the humility that it took my dad to come to his daughter and to ask for forgiveness, forgiveness that was already received. I'm not the type of person to carry unforgiveness in my heart. It's just not who I am. And, you know, just looking back and looking at all of the lessons gained and treasuring those and thinking about how those lessons are going to continue to live on and continue to fill my children with life. And all of those lessons that I gained through my grandparents, it's something that have been instilled in me and it's going to end up creating a generational shift. And it's something I'm grateful for. So I just wanted to come on today and wish all the grandparents a happy Grandparents Day, especially if you're active and present in your grandchildren's life. And if you're not and you're fighting your own personal demons or healthy boundaries have been established, you have to talk. You have to talk. You can't just, I watched an interview with Pastor Stephen and this neuroscientist and talked about mindsets and neuroplasticity and your thoughts and this woman confirmed, you can't just put a Band-Aid on issues. You have to talk. Healing does not lie in silence. So hopefully, and just sharing a couple of my thoughts today, hopefully some healing comes. So I am going to continue to pray. And for me, it's not about me. It's what legacy will continue to live on through my children. and. I pray to God. Like I said, I'm starting to have silvery highlights in my hair, and I'm coming up to 37 years of age. I've had a really rough last 12 years of life, but I'm so grateful for the second chance at life that I that I have. I'm so grateful that in 2010 that semi truck didn't take me out. I'm so grateful that I have the family that I have today. And I'm so grateful that I've gained this community that I've been able to share my journey with and love on other people and just be me, be truly me and let myself go there and be vulnerable and raw and real. It's something that I wasn't able to do before my accident. I had walls built up around me and I looked confident on the outside, but I was broken on the inside. And when everything was stripped away from me after my accident, when I felt like I had lost everything, that's where I found my relationship in Christ. And it's, it saved my life. So Chris Hanson Miller, hi, Nicole. You are awesome watching the replay. Sorry, I missed the live. You were doing well. I am. I am walking through struggles and I am trusting God and I've been a bit more silent as I've grown personally in my relationship with him. But I'm just at a place of peace, a place of peace and gratitude and trust and full surrender. And it's, it's been quite the journey and I can only pray <laughs> that it continues to serve other people and it serves a bigger purpose than me. That is what I believe success is all about. That's what I believe is a life well lived. So if you're watching, if you didn't make it, the video will replay and you can watch it at a later time. I send love and hope you all have a blessed day. Bye.